this is going to help you get started because you just bought your Dear Jane pack. Either you bought a complete pack or you started with row A. So you've got your packages. Fantastic. Now what do you do? Well, the first thing you need, you definitely need to have the Dear Jane book. And the Dear Jane book does come with a standard binding on the book. What most of us will do is we will go take it to a local print shop and have it spiral bound because when you have a book spiral bound you can then have it lay flat and this is very critical when you go to lay out your paper pieces. So what you have on the back of your row A packet is a 13 by 13 square grid that allows you to, to plan your colors accordingly. You can do anything you want. But if you have a color flow, once you look at your quilt, you'll be able to plan it accordingly and make your blocks in the right order. So what kind of colorway are you looking for? Well, the original colorway of the Dear Jane quilt, this is the original quilt, and this green square is G7, which is the direct center of the quilt. And this particular quilt, and most people will do this, is do what's called an around the world colorway. So they'll start right in the middle and they'll make this one color. And then these will be one other color. And these will be another color and so on and so forth. This is made from scraps. So occasionally you can't really see, like this pink you can sticks out, but occasionally you can't really see where the colors go. If you go online and look for Dear Jane quilt images, on the Google search, you will come up with a myriad of colors. Some people have done them in black and white. Some people have done them in one color with a background like a red with a white or a muslin. And every single one of these just looks fantastic when you have a plan. So this grid will help you make that plan in case you need to figure out what fabric to use. This grid references page 12 of the Dear Jane book where all of the blocks are numbered and laid out. You have 13 rows and 13 columns, A through M and 1 through 13. So if you have to know exactly where 3 in and 7 down is, that would be G3 as an example. So how much fabric do you need of background? How much fabric do you need for the blocks? is going to depend on your color choices. There is a guideline in the book and there is a guideline on paperpieces.com that will have what has been suggested, but ultimately it's always up to you. So you've chosen your fabric and you're ready to get started making your Dear Jane quilt. So let's break down the packet. If you open any of your packets, you will have your row booklet and inside your row booklet will be instructions and a packet of cornerstone and lattices, a block pack. This contains all the pieces for English paper piecing blocks A1 through A6, and this contains all the paper pieces for blocks A7 through A13. And in this particular packet, you have two of a four and a half inch squares. This is the finished size of the square, and there's a reason for these to be in here. And what you do is you go to the very back page and you find out that the four and a half inch squares for this particular packet are used for A3 and A7. And that's when I will write down that number on my, on my square so I know exactly which one I'm going to use. The other notes that are on here is going to be for the A3 block, which uses the clam point for a specific situation and then A7 it says to applique the leaves to the background. Anything that needs to be explained that's out of the ordinary will be in the notes section of your row pack from paper pieces. So then what else is contained in your Dear Jane row A packet? So it will start out by having a note from Jess Finn about how this project became an English paper piecing project. It will point you to our Facebook group, which we would love to have you join. You can follow along on Instagram, and you can also sign up for the auto ship program through paperpieces.com, where there's an 800 number if you choose to do so, or if you haven't done so already. It also then talks about supplies that are recommended. 
first thing you'll see, as I mentioned at the beginning of this thing, was to take your book and have it spiral bound at a local print shop. It talks about needles, thread, fabric, cutting mats, rotary cutters, and all that you can read on the screen. I will go into what I prefer, why I prefer it, in another video, and it will be called The Tools I Use, and that will be an up-and-coming video. It will also talk about why there's modifications within this particular packet. We'll also talk about getting started, which is basically about block prep, block sorting, and that kind of a thing. I do also have bag sort videos that will be posted. I will be sorting the bags of each block pack, like this will be one bag sort video, for example, about how to differentiate between the pieces in this first from A1 to A6. And this will also go into a little bit of it. This talks about your lattice and cornerstones. I refer to my lattices as sashings. So I don't want to confuse you, but my terminology that I've been brought up with is that this, this particular strip piece is a sashing, and then this little tiny half-inch square is a cornerstone. So when I'm on Facebook and when I'm on my YouTube stuff, that's how I call it. I don't want to confuse you at any kind. Um, on the row A, you're going to make a row of sashing on the very top, and then you're going to have a row of sashing on the bottom. Every subsequent row, you will just have sashing between the blocks and on the bottom. And we do recommend that you add your sashings as you go, because you don't have to add your sashings as you go, but I really would like to see the person that would enjoy putting sashings on, um, I think it's 169 squares from the beginning if they haven't worked on them as they went. I do have a cornerstones and sashings video if you're interested in how to make those for that kind of a thing. This part right here talks about keeping your project the same size as the pieces next to it. The nutshell version of that is whenever you take two pieces of paper and put fabric between them, it's going to grow. So there's a way of easing that back in to the, to the block because your sashing is one continuous piece and your block may, it's usually not one continuous piece. So you need to somehow ease all that excess in. So you'll start and go in a little bit and then tie off and then you'll start at the other end and meet where you tied off. That way you know that each end of your block is at the exact right place and that way you don't have to worry about it. This section also makes reference to when you have an English paper piece block that's completed, that's warped or misshapen or puffed out or however you want to word it, is it going to be okay when you put the papers out? Fabric has a tendency to ease itself into each other, and when you actually do put quilting on a quilt top, it does suck up some of what's considered the excess. If you're piecing by machine, you don't have to worry about that because it does it naturally. When you're piecing on paper, the paper doesn't give. So you will allow the fabric to give once you remove the papers, and you can remove the papers from a specific piece once it's been surrounded on every single side, and it's safe to take it out. Now, the meat of these booklets are where the block diagram is. There is sometimes more modifications than not. Sometimes there's only a few. This particular packet only has three modification blocks. And what these are, are these are alternate diagrams for blocks listed down here. And this is the reason why. A lot of times there's been some, inter there's some different ways of piecing these blocks in the book so they have changed it up to make it easier for English paper piecing. And so in this case you'll see that the A4 block they have taken away the cornerstones and sashings that are part of the block. You will still have cornerstones and sashings on your finished block but this whole piece is four and a half inches and in this case this whole piece is four and a half inches so they really enlarged the block. And that's why they specify that there. What I do when I see this booklet, the first thing I do before I sort my pieces, before I do anything, 
is I go to this section and I say, okay, A4 is a modified block. And in order to find the right pieces, I need to go into my paper pieces booklet. So I will put on my A4 block in my book in ballpoint pen, because I tend to use gel pens and they don't dry. Ballpoint pen works very well on this glossy paper. And I put EPP modified, which means when I go to sort this block or I go to make this block, that means I need to refer back to this picture. And sometimes I forget to do that. So I go through this and I go, okay, so A11 and A12 are also modified. So I will go in my book and sure enough, A12 EPP modified, A11 EPP modified. And then in this case, that's the end of my modifications. The next thing you do is you take one of your bags, dump it out, and sort out which pieces go where. Anything that are modified, are gonna, you're going to want to use the actual paper pieces booklet to put your pieces on to figure out which triangle goes where and all that fun stuff. I do have bag sort videos. If they're not listed now, they will be in the future where I will break down each specific bag of a row pack because there are little tricks to each single one of them. Some of us on the Facebook page have found some issues. For example, the octagon drama of the F3 block comes to mind. And just little hints and tips that we've learned along the way. Anything that you find that's been kind of tricky in here, you can either ask questions on the Facebook group or report to us and say, hey, I found this out, beware. Because some of us may not have noticed, some of us may not have gotten to that point yet, and others of us may have already solved that, so we can either help you solve it, you can make us aware that it's a problem, or anything in between. So we always appreciate that community participation, and that's how these videos came to be about. So you're going to sort your A1 through A6 blocks, you're going to sort your A7 through A13 blocks, and then you're going to be able to sit down and get started with your blocks.